going to start with our stance, guys. We're going to start with how, how we teach our stance at Spash. We have, we have essentially three stances that we'll teach. We have a two-point stance for our tailbacks. Okay, so Alex is going to be shoulder, feet shoulder width apart. He's going to have his, his hands on his thigh boards. He's going to have his knees over his toes. He's going to be just a little bit of pressure on his toes, just a little bit. Okay, he's going to have his shoulders back, and he's going to have his head up and his chest out. Okay, that's basically our two-point stance for our tailbacks. All right, and we've got a three-point stance that we'll use for our fullbacks. Okay, hand out. Okay, he's going to have a little bit of pressure on the hand just so it's nice and just a little bit uncomfortable. We're not, not too comfortable. We want him to be able to fire out of there, okay? He's going to have his right foot back just a little bit farther with his right hand down. His left foot is out, and his, his left hand is up here. It's not out front dangling or down on the ground doing whatever, right? Stand up. And then the other, the third one that we do here, okay, it's going to be a two-point stance with our fullback who's got flexibility. And Alex has, got, <laughs> Alec has fle flexibility. So he's going to be low, and essentially what he's doing is he's hiding behind our guard. Okay, and I see the two guys from Kimberly. You guys know what I'm talking about. Okay, so he's going to be hiding behind our guard a little bit, okay? And he's going to be able to fire out of there just like a normal three-point stance, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. The only difference between this and that is his weight is going to be back far. Okay, his weight's going to be back far and it's going to be a little bit easier. He's pretty low to the ground, but it's still going to be pretty easy for him to see what's going on. Okay? So then we've got our steps. Okay, we've got our, first, uh, we've got our, our, our four steps. We've got a direct step, okay, that we'll use on our ISO plays, anything, anything straight ahead essentially. Okay, so if Alec, Alec is our tailback at this point, we want to take a direct step with his right foot if we're running, say, 32 ISO. Okay, if he's got a problem with taking false steps, I'm going to put my foot right behind his foot, and I'm going to say set, and when I say set, he's going to go, set. Okay, so he didn't step on my foot. And I'm, uh, like I said to the other group, the old adage is, we don't want to move to move. Okay, so if he's got to move this foot, then we're wasting steps. We're wasting precious time. Now, that might be okay for our tailbacks, because we're seven yards back, but it's not okay for our guards. It's not okay for our fullbacks. We've got to move, and we've got to move forward now, okay? Second step is going to be an angle step. Okay, it's about 45 degrees. We'll use this step with our fullbacks on power plays, anything that we've got off tackle. Okay, he's just going to take a nice 45 degree step. Now, if I'm the defensive end, if I'm the defensive end, and Alec is, and we're running power, and Alec knows he's got to kick the end, he, he's got to understand I'm not going to be right here after that ball snapped. So his 45, his 45 degree, his angle step has got to be to my outside shoulder and where I'm going to be. So that's been one thing that we preach to these guys. So it's a little bit more than 45. It's probably, nah, you know, 52 degrees, whatever it is, okay? Third step is a bucket step, okay? It's an out step, okay? We'll do this with our toss, with our sweeps, with, our, uh, with both our fullbacks and our tailbacks. Now it differs a little bit depending on what position he's playing. It's going to be a little bit deeper, but his bucket step Essentially, is what I'm, what I'm telling him is take your foot and step in the bucket. Okay, so he's going to pick that up. He's going to step at about 330, and he's just going to get some depth and some width. Now, if he's our fullback and he's up tighter to the close, closer to the line of scrimmage, it's going to be a little bit flatter. Okay, so if he's up at the line of scrimmage, he's got to take it a little bit flatter. He's still got a little bit of depth to get because you know tackles, tight ends, they don't always they don't always move forward. So you got to make sure he clears those guys first. All right, the last step he's going to do. Excuse me. The last step he's going to take is a crossover step. And we run this crossover step on our counters. Okay, so if he's our tailback, we're running 37 counter over. Can you do it that way? Okay. We run, we're going to run pull guard and pull tackle over this way. We've got to get time for those guys. So what's going to happen is our tailback on the snap of the football set, he's going to cross over that left foot plant and come right back. It's really quick, it's really fast. But at the same time, it allows enough time for our, t our, our guard and our tackle to get their butts across. Okay? All right. Handling the football. As we teach our kids from third grade all the way through the senior year, when you're handling the football, we handle the football with four points of pressure. We got our fingers crossed, we got our fingers across the nose of the football. I got kids that like to do this, that's fine. If you want to break a finger, I don't care, okay? But I like to carry the football with my fingers, like giving, you know, just giving that thing the peace sign, all right? Okay, second one is our forearm, just on the outside of that football, 
third one's going to be up across our chest, and the fourth one is going to be this elbow up tight against our body. We want the football almost right underneath our face mask, tight across our body. No matter what we're doing, no matter where we are, if we're holding on to a football, we're holding on to a football like this. And I tell our kids in practice, if you can get this football from one of these running backs, they got to give me push-ups. And they turn this into a game all year long. You'd be surprised how many push-ups kids got to give me. All right? Well, you know, that's unfortunate. We don't want that. So, <laughs> how, do we, how, do, how do we protect the football? Well, actually, excuse me. Let me, let me, let me stop here for a second. Let me, let me go back. How do we exchange a football? How do we take the football? Okay, so if Alex, if Alex, if I'm the quarterback and I'm going to give the ball to Alec, Alec wants to take the football with his inside hand up, okay, and his outside hand down, he wants to take that football with his body and his arms. Okay, he doesn't want to reach for it. He doesn't want to come out and take it like this. He wants to come out, he wants to take the football with his whole body. Okay, he's going to wrap his whole body over the top. His shoulders are going to come down. He's going to secure that football, make sure that he's got it locked tight, and then he can pick what hand that thing's going to. Okay, he will run, as a fullback, he will run through the line that way. That is how he will run and clear level one. Okay, our tailbacks, on the other hand, will clear level one more than likely with the ball in one hand. They feel pressure, they're going to cover that football up. So if Alex is our tailback and he feels pressure through the line, he's going to cover that football up. Okay, he's going to take this opposite hand and he's going to clinch that opposite wrist. Okay, rather than rather than covering up like that. And the reason that we do that is it's more fluid. It's easier to run when you're doing this. You get the same ball security, okay, but more movement, more flexibility up top. It's easier to get out of, and it's easier to run fast. And so anytime I'm in practice and I see these guys wandering around doing whatever, or they're in a drill or something, I'll come by and I'll just swing a hand. And they know, cover that thing up, okay? <clears throat> Sorry guys, this is, my, this is my first clinic, sorry. <laughs> okay, so we're carrying the ball in traffic. All right, changing hands. Um, some of you guys might tell your guys there's no way you guys can change hands. You pick that right hand, that's where that thing stays until you're down, okay? I tell our kids, you pick a hand, that thing stays until you're clear of any pressure whatsoever. You got a clear level one, as soon as that happens, you got that ball, you might, you gotta make a move. After you make that move, you might be heading to the sideline. Okay, so if I'm on the right sideline, it makes no sense for me to keep this football in my left hand. For two reasons. Fumble does happen, which it never does. If a fumble does happen, that thing's right back in the field of play. Okay, the second, thing, the second reason is, if I got pressure coming from this way, because there's nobody coming off the sideline to get me, if I got pressure coming from this way, this hand is completely useless. Okay, so I want to keep this ball on the outside so I can use this hand to stiff arm, swat anything, whatever I need to do, okay? Plus, if there's a fumble, it goes out of bounds. All right? Okay, moving on. We're just going to go through a quick vision drill. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of guys that <clears throat> will incorporate vision and balance and, and explosion and all that stuff and a bunch of different drills. And, and we try our best to incorporate as many things as we possibly can in one drill or another, okay? So this, this vision drill, this read drill that we're gonna do, is gonna do two things for us especially. It's gonna, one, it's gonna open his eyes, he's gonna get good vision, he's gonna learn and be able to read things. And two, it's gonna give him some explosion too off of a cup. So all I'm gonna do as the coach is I'm gonna stand in between these two bags here. Alex's gonna start from the cone there, he's gonna come at me. And as soon as I make a move with this bag, he's going to stick a foot in the ground, he's going to make a cut, he's going to explode out of it. Okay? Now as we progress throughout the season and as kids get older and they get better at what they're doing, we can, we can turn this into six bags, or five bags, or four, or ten, or however many you want. And then what's going to happen is we'll get two other cones set up over there. He'll come downhill to this cone. As soon as he gets to that cone, a coach will be standing back there and he will have pointed at one of the players holding a bag and they're gonna make that they're gonna make that move for him. So what he's gotta do then is he's gotta read what's going on across the entire line because the hole isn't always gonna be right here. You know what I mean? It's not things aren't always they don't always go as planned. That hole might end up being all the way out here. He doesn't know that but he's gotta to react to it. So it's something that we can work on. Okay. We preach a lot of ball security. 
our biggest listener. <laughs> <laughs> He's got that on camera. <laughs> okay, so we preach a lot of wall security. It's probably it's probably something that I talk about when I'm at school. 95% of the time, I've got people at work that tell me to shut up. <laughs> but it's just so important, right? So we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you a couple of quick drills that I like to do that are gonna work on balance and ball security. Okay, so Alex is gonna be on his right foot. He's gonna put that ball in his right hand, okay? Don't, don't secure this yet, okay? So when he, he's gonna hop over these cones on one foot. One, creating him to, excuse me, making him learn how to balance his body and his weight. And two, sometimes that's gonna create a natural I gotta get this, I gotta, I gotta balance so that ball's gonna come off of his chest. Okay, so we gotta learn that with balance, I still got a football in my hand. So he's gonna hop over and as he does that, three times. I'm gonna try and hit this ball out. And then he's gonna sprint out of it. Did I, did I punch him in the neck? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so we'll do it, we'll go through that, we'll do that one a couple of times, both hands. One foot, okay, it's always gonna be the same foot, same hand, all right? Another one that we'll do is another one that we're going to do is he's going to hop three times. Okay, he's going to hop so that he lands so it's just like that. And I'm going to come through and I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to ride him all the way up for about three or four yards and then he'll sprint out. Okay, because once again he's got one foot half, one foot down and one hand down. He's got to think about what's going on. He's got to think about this opposite hand. Okay, sometimes they forget I got a football in my hand. And that's what you get. Pop that thing out, okay? It's creating balance and ball security. Alright? Last thing I have for you guys, uh, we don't need that anymore, is blocking. Blocking, I mean, any of you guys that sat in Coach McAdams' session had a chance to see our tailback's lack of blocking. We, we, we don't excel at it necessarily at the tailback position. It's not something I'm proud of, but but Alec makes up for it. Alec's a heck of a blocker, okay? <clears throat> so what we'll do is some drills that we have, and we don't have a two-man sled here. One thing that I like to do with a two-man sled, I'll start the kids up with their face mask right on that two-man sled, side by side. They'll be on their knees and on a set or, or, or whatever call you want to make. They'll explode, and what they're going to do, they're going to be on their knees. You want to? I'm too old, I might not be able to get up. They're gonna be on their knees, okay, in the picture of that two-man sled right here. They're gonna come through, they're gonna roll their hips through on it, and as they do that, the momentum that they both create, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to get up. Alex, he's not gonna be able to get up either without that sled. But what they're gonna do is they'll create an explosion, and it's gonna carry them right up to their feet. Okay, I wish we had a, anyway. All right, that's one last drill I like to do change of direction. It's very key. It's, it's not only something we can do with our running backs, it's something we do with anybody, anybody that really needs, needs to well carry the ball. Our offensive line could do this one. I mean, it's a pretty good drill. I don't have any whistles. So you can set up. Okay. Well, what, what we're looking for in the change of direction drill is one, is he quick? Is he quick? Can he make, can he, can he make that say two minutes? Two minutes. He, he's gonna make a quick decision, okay? Rather than rather than come through and stop and then take another couple of steps, is he quick enough in his head to be able to stop on a dime, drop his hips, okay, get his weight underneath him, and then be able to reverse that and come back. So we'll do this with our backs, quarterbacks, receivers. All he's gonna do is straight ahead and try to come back, right? Set, 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 and then he'll sprint up. And always making a move. He's always gonna make a move every single time, okay? It's just one of those things that I'd say we probably do change of direction maybe twice a week. You know, in one variation or another, whether it's with cones in a different realm, or whether it's with the bags. I love it with the bags. You can do it with ropes, you can do it with tires, you can do it with essentially pretty much anything you want, right? Guys, that's pretty much all I have for you right now. I'm, I'm winded. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is going to break you guys down. I have a quick question, Coach. Actually, yes. a couple oh, if you sorry, don't mind. Yes. Um, for your three-point stance, do you, do you teach 
fingers down, knuckles down, I whatever, teach whatever, whatever, whatever they're, they're comfortable okay. with. 